Some will say it's magic, but I know that you did all that. You're the reason there's no doubt. Doesn't matter just how many times I try. There could only be a single reason why. So tell Time in. I don't hear it goes just happen like that. Good morning, church. Uh, you can stand with us and our extra members here on stage with us. <laughs> uh, we're going to start by singing Blessed Be Your Name. Blessed be your name. 
Good morning, everyone. What a beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning we have here. Welcome to everyone. Welcome to our online viewers. Um, if there's, we have any guests with us this morning, there is a connection card in the seat pocket in front of you. If you'd like to fill that out and put that um, in the offering plates as you leave, we would appreciate that as well. Um, with that today, after service, if we have any guests, anyone new, um, and you would like to join us, we are having a connection lunch downstairs immediately following the service. Um, again, any of you that are new, you'd like to learn a little bit more about our church um, and the staff here, we would love to have you join us. Next Sunday, August 6th, there will be no Get Rooted. Um, a lot of our senior teens will be on a camping trip up north, so there is no class, no Get Rooted next Sunday morning, August 6th. Our community tailgate, August 12th. That is at McCormick Park um, from 4 to 6 p.m. Reminder, that text message that you guys got last Sunday, um, about 1025 in the service, there is a sign-up genius that you can go on and sign up if you are RSVPing to come to that and also if you would like to volunteer to bring anything to that as well. Prior to the tailgate, we are going to be meeting here at the church um, at noon and doing a prayer walk throughout the community. So if that's something that you're interested in, please contact us and let us know about that as well. Um, we are having an all-church meeting on August 20th, um, directly following the service. Again, just kind of giving um, an update on things going on here. And worship night, August 27th. So join us for a night of worship and prayer at 6.30 p.m. That is Sunday, August 27th. Um, let's see what else do I have on my list here. Offering. There are three ways that you can give here to the church. You can... Um, Leave your offering in the plate as you exit uh, the service today. You can also give online at williamstonchurch.org, and you can also um, drop it off here at the church or mail it in as well. All right, so the most important announcement I have is VBS this last week was absolutely amazing. We had a stellar week. Um, lots of kids came. I want to thank every single one of the, the children that came um, this week, every single one of our volunteers. This would not have been possible without all of you giving of your time and your talents to serve and, and helping out and just pouring into the kids and the families that walk through our doors. Um, we've got a great recap video, and then after that, I'm going to invite the kids to, kinda, to come up and um, do our song that we practiced all week. So we're going to start. Our theme for the entire week is Shine Jesus Light. Don't give 
joined at VBS this year. This has been an amazing time with some amazing kids and leaders and everybody had a great time. Don't forget to remain stellar. Don't forget to come to church on Sunday. We love you. Peace out. That was so much fun. I have to give a big shout out to Caleb. Every night we came back at the end of the night and I said, what was your favorite, what was your favorite thing of the night? And without fail, every single night, it was the games. Caleb and Colin combined and ran our games, so, and he's been, he was, was awesome, a great sport. The kids love to just completely douse him uh, in shaving cream. That was a fun thing to end, to end our week as well. So I'd like to invite all of the kids that came to VBS that would like to sing um, our theme song for the week. Come up and help me with it. I think Astro was going to make an appearance, too. I thought I... Thought I heard him. Oh, there we go. There's Astro. Yes. Okay. Also, while the kids are coming up, I want to kind of highlight too. We did a sort of a an outreach thing this week, and to support our Lansing homeless ministry, to bring in some prepackaged snacks and everything that's sitting over here in front of that board is everything that the kids brought in this week. So that's going to be a huge, huge help and support um, to that ministry, uh, the Lansing homeless ministry that we have too. So thank you all for that. Kids are dismissed downstairs. Uh, okay, that was that was awesome, Kim. And thank you, kids. I uh, I know being a part of this week for a few days, they just bring a lot of joy, don't they? 
Hi, Regan. <laughs> uh, go Team Luna, right? Um, all right, so we are going to enter just into another time of worship, so go ahead and stand with us. I guess I would call um, King of Kings, I guess we would call this a wordy song. Lots of words, but they're good words. And I just want to remind you as we're singing it, this song tells of the greatest story ever told. And just see, and through this, and it always goes back to this chorus, praise the Father, praise the Son, praise forever to the King of Kings. So I just love this song because of the goodness and the power to all of the words. In the darkness we were waiting without hope, without light, till 
from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt praise the Jesus. 
you, Lord, for this amazing time that we get to worship you. And so we just uh, ask that you would open, continue to open our hearts as we um, hear what Pastor Neil has to share for us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. My name is Neil. I'm one of the pastors here. And that was just a quick video on Planning Center. Has anybody heard of Planning Center? Yes? Does anybody have the Church Center app? That's what that video was all about. We are rolling out this campaign over the next several months for us as a church to really get engaged with one another. And the Church Center app is a powerful tool for us to use as a church to get connected with each other, to get connected with the opportunities that the church has. You saw all those different things that are on that app, things like the calendar, things like check-ins, things like giving, things like events. You'll see all of our um, classes on there. So when we roll out these next classes that start in September, you'll be able to go to the app and see all the classes that are listed. You can even sign up for the classes right in the app. Um, And one of the main focuses we have for this next season is for us as a church to to come together and get to know each other even more than we already do. For for new faces to become familiar faces, right? And and to to reach out to each other on on a more regular basis. So if you don't have the Church Center app, I encourage you to download it. It's both on the the Google Play Store and the App Store for iPhones and iPads. Check that app out. Um, Log in. You'll log in using your phone number or an email. Um, And then you'll have access to all sorts of things through there. And eventually our goal is to get everyone access to the directory. So there's a directory through the app where you can go on and say, oh man, I met that person last week, but I don't remember their name. And you can go onto your phone before service and you see them across the way and you can scroll through. Oh yeah, that's right, that's, that's Amy, right? And you can, you can see pictures of people too because we're gonna encourage everyone to upload a family picture on there um, and picture themselves. You can scroll through and find out who's who. And you're like, man, I really loved what so-and-so had to share during Bible study this morning. I just wanna shoot them a text or send them a card in the mail for their birthday. Well, you can do that. If that person shares their information on Planning Center, all of that information is right at our fingertips, and we can just be even more connected as a church. So if you haven't already, download the Church Center app, and then we're, you're going to be hearing a lot more about this. There's even a special prize you saw at the end of that VBS video. If you upload all your information onto that Planning Center directory and share your, your profile, you're going to get an awesome sticker that Colin Hicks Um, designed for us. So there's your incentive. But even more than that, isn't it awesome that we can as a church know each other and have each other's information and reach out at a second's notice when someone's in need, right? Right. So so stay tuned for more information on that. So you guys were aware that we were in a series, What is Christian Success? Um, The screen above me doesn't say what is Christian success. It says invitation to discipline. This is our new series we're going to be in for the next five weeks. In the past several weeks, we looked at Christian success, and we talked about all sorts of things. We talked about the things that hold us back from Christian success in our lives. We talked about stewardship. We talked about family. We talked about relationships, right? And for the next five weeks, we're going to be going on this journey together to to practice five specific disciplines that are pretty common in the, the Christian walk. And, and I hope that you get excited about this, to, to be able to put our faith into practice. So this series might be a little bit different. 
Um, you're not going to be hearing a ton about certain biblical lessons and teachings, um, but obviously all of this is going to come from the Bible, and these are great practices that we as Christians can engage in. And one of the biggest things that we want to do for this series is an invitation to invite you guys and to invite us as a church to practice these disciplines on a day-to-day -day and a week-in, week-out basis. So when I was in high school and my faith was just starting to get real for me, I struggled a lot with how do I practice my faith? Like I knew that there was prayer and I knew that we were supposed to study the Bible, but I was 14 years old and I didn't really know what prayer was supposed to look like. What, is there a specific way that I have to pray? Like do I have to fold my hands and s sit with a back posture, or do I have to kneel at an altar, and do I have to say, Lord Jesus Christ, or do I have to say, Father, or do I say, God, or like, where do I even begin with prayer? And so I struggled with, like, I know I'm supposed to pray, but what does that actually look like? And I know I'm supposed to read my Bible, but anyone ever studied the book of Leviticus? You read through that, and you're like, what is going on? right? And then you read through some of the books, and you're like, haven't I already read this before? Like, isn't this the same story that was told just a couple books ago? Well, it probably was, right? In some of the Old Testament, the stories repeat themselves. So I didn't quite know how to read my Bible, and it wasn't until college that I learned that there are over 60 different spiritual disciplines that Christians can practice right? Did, did you know that? There are over 60 different spiritual disciplines that you and I can use to deepen our relationship with God. And in college, I, I got this book called Spiritual Disciplines Handbook, and here's the title of it by Adele. Um, awesome book. I encourage you to, to get it. They've got an updated version, and it has these 60 different disciplines, and it's got this awesome intro page on the beginning that, that talks and goes through these things that you, like, different spiritual desires that you have, and it says, if you have a spiritual desire for this, or you need this in your life, practice this discipline. Um, it's got all sorts of details about how to practice these disciplines and directions and guidelines. So if you want to dig more into these spiritual disciplines, I encourage you to, to grab this book, um, check it out, and, and start using it for, for your own life. So the discipline that I believe God is inviting us to this week and on an ongoing basis is fasting, right? So to, to understand fasting, I need, I need to define it. And I want to define it today by explaining what fasting is and what fasting is not. So number one, fasting is not a dieting technique. Fasting isn't, oh, I'm just going to stop eating these things and it's just a diet. Like, that, that's not what fasting is. But fasting is a spiritual focus, a, a focus for spiritual growth. Fasting is also not to be used for manipulating God into getting whatever we want. We, we don't fast and say, God, I'm going to fast from this thing until you give me whatever I want. Eh, that's not how fasting works. But fasting is an intentional way to empty ourselves so that we can hear and understand God's will more clearly in our lives. At its simplest form, fasting is to abstain from something to focus on spiritual growth. Did, did you hear that? Something, it, it doesn't have to be food. The most common form of fasting is a food fast, but we can fast from anything to fast from something in order to focus on spiritual growth. So now I'm going to tell you what does this look like in a practical level. If you were to fast from a meal, the goal is to, to remove that thing, remove, let's say, breakfast or lunch, and to replace it with spiritual activity, right? With, with seeking God in prayer, in scripture memorization, in scripture study, or in meditating on God. And the same is true for any other fast that we practice, right? Whether you're fasting from social media, or whether you're fasting from snacking, whether you're fasting from maybe watching TV, the, the goal in fasting is to remove something, to abstain from something in our lives, to create space, to create time, 
to create intentionality to invest in our relationship with God and with others. There are many places in the Bible where fasting occurs, and we have both good and poor examples of fasting. I want to begin with the book of Esther this morning. Um, the book of Esther is an Old Testament book and a, a, really interesting, a really interesting book because the word God actually never appears once in the book. We just kind of have to assume and infer from the st- telling of the story that, that it is all about God. So the book of Esther uh, takes place in this Jewish community, and there's two main characters. We've got Mordecai and we've got Esther, and they're, they're friends and they're both Jews. And there's this king who throws this really big party, and he requests his wife to show up to show off her beauty. Uh, But the queen is not interested in showing up to show off her beauty at this party. Um, And king gets kind of upset about this and dethrones the queen, um, sends her off, and has this plan to replace the queen because she wouldn't do what the king wanted. So the king has this beauty contest to pick the next queen. Um, So Esther enters this contest and ends up winning, right? And then, right alongside of this, the king empowers a guy named Haman to the highest position in the kingdom. So he's like kind of ruler under, under the king. The king says, okay, you go manage these things for me, and I'm just the king, and I get to sit up here on the throne. And so this guy named Haman makes this rule that everyone has to kneel before him because he's... Uh, full of pride and pompous. Uh, And uh, Mordecai, remember Esther's friend, refuses to kneel before this guy because he doesn't like him, right? And he honors God. He won't kneel before anyone but God. So um, Haman gets all sorts of upset at at Mordecai and says, I'm going to kill you and I'm going to kill all the Jews because Mordecai was Jewish. So Haman takes this, this plan to the king, and the king kind of foolishly accepts and says, yeah, let's make this decree. To, we're going to kill all the Jews um, because you don't like them. And so there's this decree out to kill all of the Jews. And Mordecai comes to Esther and is like, Esther, you need to do something about this. Like, like you're the queen. Can't, can't you like intervene and tell the king that this is a bad plan? Like, d- did you know that I'm Jewish and that you'd be killing the queen whom you like and whom you appointed as queen? And so Esther's like, I can't do this, right? Like, like there was a rule in that age, a law, that you could not approach the king unless he requested you to come in. And so Esther's like, this is a death sentence for me. Like, I can't g- go before the king without being called by him. So in... Esther 4, verse 16, Esther sends this reply to Mordecai. She says, Go, gather all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast with you. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. So in the end of the story, Esther goes to the king, and the king finds favor with Esther and makes this new decree to counter and cancel out the decree to kill all of the Jews. So this was a significant time for the whole Jewish community, right? Their actual lives were at stake if if Esther would not go to the king and plead on their behalf. And if the king didn't find favor with Esther, she and all the Jews would be dead. So the whole Jewish community here, and Esther, and Esther requests the community, go and pray and fast for me for three days, and then I'll go to the king and pray that God would find favor with us and that the king would find favor with us so that our lives would be spared. So this is one example in the Bible where we see people fasting to plead with God to find favor before a challenging situation. So just like the Jewish community here, we can fast and we can pray when we face challenging situations. When you know that there's a difficult situation coming up, a difficult election, maybe, 
something difficult in your personal family, something that you know is going to stir up strife and, and difficulty, and we can go to the Lord and plead on his, our behalf and others' behalf for favor. We also see several other examples in Scripture of, of fasting. Uh, take Jesus, for example. He fasted before and during his time in the desert, right? When he was tempted by Satan in Matthew chapter 4. So again, fasting can be used when we're going into and facing a challenging situation. It can also be used when we need discernment from God. Like in the book of Acts. So in the book of Acts, after Jesus has ascended into heaven and the church is just starting out and sending out missionaries and forming churches, and um, this account is found in chapter 13, verses 1 through 3. It says, Now the church in Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas and Simeon called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menaean, and Saul. While they were worshiping, and fast, worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart from me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. So, so this pattern of worshiping the Lord and fasting opened up this group of church leaders to hear the Lord speaking. And he spoke clearly to them and, and called Barnabas and called Saul to the work of ministry. And they continued then in fasting and praying before they were sent off to what was probably going to be a difficult journey ahead. See, in fasting and in our spiritual lives, there's this battle going on all around us. We don't see it, but it's there. There's this battle between the flesh, our worldly desires, our selfish intentions, and between the spirit. And fasting is one way to have self-control over our flesh, right? To set aside the things uh, that our flesh wants, they can be good things. They can also be bad things when they become too much. But to set those aside to focus on God. Because when there is less of us and more of God, this is what we experience when we fast. When we remove something, abstain from something in the worldly essence, we can experience more of God in the spiritual world. There's a really interesting passage in, in chapter in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 58, and it's a little bit difficult to understand because it's uh, one of the prophecies and, and God speaking to Isaiah, and Isaiah speaking um, to, to the people. Um, so I, I found this version from the message version. It kind of just summarizes what's going on. And I'm going to read it and then unpack it because it has a lot to teach us about fasting. Isaiah 58, you can follow along if you'd like, but it's going to sound a little bit different from your Bible. It says, shout a full-throated shout. Hold nothing back. A trumpet blast shout. Tell my people what's wrong with their lives. Face my family, Jacob, with their sins. So let me unpack this just a little bit. So G God is calling Isaiah to shout, talk to the people and tell them all of this that I'm about to tell you. So he continues and says, they're busy, busy, busy at worship and they love studying all about me. To all appearance, appearances, they're a nation of right living people law-abiding, God-honoring. They ask me, what's the right thing to do? And love having me on their side. So on the outside, it looks like everything's right in this community, right? They're, they're busy at worship. They're, they're studying all about God. In appearances, they're a nation of right-living people, law-abiding and God-honoring. But here's the next verse but they also complain. Why do we fast and you don't look our way? Why do we humble ourselves and you don't even notice? So, so this community is busy at worship, busy at studying God, and they're even fasting. And they're complaining to God 
saying, God, why don't you look our way? Why don't you have favor with us? We're fasting, we're worshiping you, and you don't even notice. Well, here is God's answer. Verse 3. Well, here's why. The bottom line on your fast days is profit. You drive your employees much too hard. You fast, but at the same time, you bicker and fight. You fast, but you swing a mean fist. <laughs> so God's saying, yeah, you're fasting. Yeah, you're, you're worshiping, but you don't mean it. Your heart isn't with it. Because on your fast days, all you're concerned about is making money. And on your fast days, all you do is complain and fight with each other. Here's the next verse. This is the kind of fasting you do won't get your prayers off the ground. Do you think this is the kind of fast day I'm after? A day to show off humility? To put on a pious long face and parade around solemnly in black? Do you call that fasting? A, a fast day that I, God, would like? So God's saying, you call this fasting? You, you're actually being prideful. You're, you're trying to appear as if you're so humble and you put on this long face, oh, I'm fasting, it's so difficult, I'm so holy. You wear black clothing and sackcloth. God says, you call that fasting? That's not fasting, that's just a show. You're, you're basically a Pharisee. The next verse picks up and says this. This is the kind of fast day I'm after, to break the chains of injustice, to get rid of exploitation in the workplace, to free the oppressed, to cancel debts. What I'm interested in seeing you do is share your food with the hungry, inviting the homeless poor into your homes, putting clothes on the shivering ill-clad, being available to your own families. Do this and the light will turn on, and your lives will turn around at once. Your righteousness will pave your way. The God of glory will secure your passage. Then when you pray, God will answer. You call out for help and all say, here I am. Did you hear all those things that God was looking for? This verses 6 through 9 explain what God wants out of us as we fast, or many of the things, to, to fight injustice, to free the oppressed, to cancel debts, to feed the poor. Wouldn't it be so awesome if our homeless ministry on the Sundays that they serve, and we as a church on the Sundays that our homeless ministry was serving in, in downtown Lansing, would, would be fasting and praying as we serve those who are experiencing oppression and injustice. Those who have no clothes and those who have no food. I like this one, to be present with your family. <laughs> I think in, a, in today's world, it's so easy for us to be so distracted that when we go home, while we're in the physical presence of our families, we're often scrolling on a, on a phone. We're often staring at the black screen in front of us. But we're not actually really present with those who are around. But it says, when we fast like this, God will answer our prayers. As we fast, and when we fast, there are all sorts of benefits. While the main focus of fasting is spiritual growth, practicing fasting with a good attitude and right heart also helps us grow in humility. It also helps us grow in repentance and submission to God. I've been reading uh, a, a devotional book in preparation for this sermon. I've been reading it for, I think, the past 200 some days. Um, and Richard Foster, who, who wrote the book, describes fasting in this way. He says, fasting is carrying your pain into God's presence. And that stuck with me. I, I thought, hmm, there's a lot of people who are experiencing pain in this world. And what a cool way to set aside my own desires on behalf of someone else who's experiencing pain. Maybe in my own life, set aside my own desires, my own worldly needs for, for food. 
or my own just wants, and to, to carry my pain before God in prayer and fasting. Fasting is a great way to break through sin in your life. Remember our sermon, Nothing Holds You Back? Is there something in your life that is holding you back from God's best for Christian success in your life? Maybe you need to pray about it. Maybe you need to spend time fasting and praying that God would break the chains that are holding you back. Or maybe you need to fast because there is bitterness in your heart from unforgiveness. There's someone that has wronged you and hurt you, and it's been difficult to forgive them. And maybe you need to take time of prayer and fasting and plead before the Lord that he would help you forgive them. Or like Esther, maybe we need to fast in order to fight on behalf of someone else in their pain, right? The whole Jewish community was going to be annihilated here. And they all went to prayer, and they all went to fasting. Maybe there's someone in your close circle of friends, those who you care for, who are facing a really difficult time. And you want to go to prayer, and you want to go to battle for them by fasting. Maybe you are experiencing suffering, or someone else you know is experiencing suffering or loss, or addiction, and you want to fast for them, or fast for yourself, to experience God in a new way. There's a, this really cool thing about fasting, that as we fast, it clears out ourselves, and, and opens us up intentionally to seeking God's will and his grace be, beyond the normal habits of worship and prayer. You see, fasting is an opportunity to lay down an appetite, an appetite that we have for good things, sometimes for bad things. It exposes what we turn to for comfort. I think this is a powerful idea of in life there are all sorts of things that we turn to for comfort, all sorts of things that are idols in our lives. When we experience stress, do you go right to the, to the cupboard for a snack? When you experience anxiety, do you, do you immediately turn to scrolling through social media? When you experience boredom, do you go right to the TV, right to that Netflix series? Right? So fasting is this great opportunity for us because it exposes the things that we turn to for comfort when we should be turning to God. When we fast, we open ourselves up to the transforming power of Jesus. Do you want the transforming power of Jesus in your life? I know I do. I need it in my life. We, we fast to focus on God and spiritual growth. But there's also some extra things that come as we fast. Would you believe that there are actually health benefits to fasting? Some of you are like, health benefits for starving myself? I don't think so. But for short periods of time, fasting actually allows our body to cleanse itself from toxins that are so prevalent in our processed foods these days. Do you hear stewardship written all over taking care of the temple that God has given us? It can reduce blood pressure. It can strengthen our cells, reduce inflammation, support weight loss, and if you do the research, a whole lot of other big medical words that I didn't understand when I was looking it up. But just for a one word of caution and liability, please consult a health professional if you have any sort of health concern before fasting. And don't try a 40-day fast without working up to it in smaller increments and under the supervision of a health professional. But here's a, a great outline for fasting. So um, these are just kind of four simple steps that you can go through as you consider fasting. And there's going to be an invitation later today into fasting. So begin to think about these things. So number one, what are you fasting from? Uh, simple question. Are you fasting from food? Are you, are you fasting from social media? 
Are you fasting from grumbling and complaining? Are you, you fasting from sports or from television? What is that thing in your life that you need to set aside to focus on your relationship with the Lord? And number two, why are you fasting from it? There should always be some sort of positive thing, spiritual thing that we replace the thing that we're fasting from. So are you going to study God's word? Is there a specific book of the Bible that you're going to study in those times that are created from your fasting? And, and then how long? Are you going to are you going to fast for from one meal a week? Are you going to fast from one meal a day for a week? Are you going to fast for 48 hours? Are you going to fast from from something else in your life for 40 days? And then just for uh, help at the beginning especially, who's keeping you accountable? Maybe let a spouse or a parent or a close friend know. Um, to help them, them keep you accountable because on those first couple of days, it's really easy to just go right to that thing because that's been a habit in our life, right? So one thing that I think I'm, we should be aware of and you might be thinking right now is there's this fear of fasting. Anybody like, I don't, I don't know about that. Like, that, that sounds kind of scary. You like not eating? For a whole day? Um, and I just experienced this this past week. I was thinking to myself, and in my, in my time of prayer and journaling, I was like, I, I want to fast sometime this week. But then there was this fear in the back of my mind of, oh, that's going to be hard. Like, you're going to have to give up a, like, a lunch or like a meal, and your stomach's going to start grumbling. Like, what are you going to do about that? And, and there was just this fear in the back of my mind about, about participating in that fast that almost made me not do it. But I ended up just going for it. Um, and really, it wasn't that bad. It, the, the fear of fasting was worse than the actual fast. Isn't that kind of ironic? So one other thing that you might struggle with, as, as I've struggled with, is you might not see immediately results, right? And this is a tough one, but we need to keep at it. Because just like working out, just like many other disciplines in life, you might not feel any different or experience some sort of spectacular spiritual breakthrough for skipping one meal. But after continual practice, God will honor your sacrifice and the time that you spend, the extra quality time that you spend with God in prayer. So like I mentioned, with each sermon in this series, there's going to be an invitation for you to participate. So be prepared to step outside your comfort zone to, to take your next step towards intimacy with God. So as we move into this time of thinking about fasting and what you might participate in in a fast, think about your relationship with God. Is there something that most often gets in the way? Or is there something that takes up a lot of your free time when you could be spending it with Jesus? Maybe it's a food fast, and for the next week you want to skip one meal a day. Or maybe you start smaller than that. Maybe you're a snacker, and every time you, something gets stressful or you find yourself with free time throughout the day, you reach for that snack. And, and maybe you practice a little self-control and turn to God in prayer instead of fasting, or instead of snacking. Or maybe you indulge in a lot of sugary treats. You can be a d big dessert eater. Not a single dessert eater in this room. I'll skip that one then. But what if we fasted from those things and said, God, you are sweeter than these things in my life. You are better than these things in my life. And turn to him in prayer. What about our tech addicts out there? Could you give up social media for a week? Maybe a month? Our sport watchers, could you turn the TV off? Just unplug it from the wall. And take that time and invest in your family. Invest in your relationship with God. Maybe you need to, when you get home from work, that phone, you hit the power button and you throw it in a drawer. And you spend time with your family in prayer. 
Fasting is something that God expects of his followers. Matthew 6.16 says, When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to those that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Did you hear that, that word, when? When you fast? He says it twice. And he says it in combination with a couple other things that he expects believers to do in that passage. So here's the invitation. We are inviting you as a staff and as a church to fast. Would you fast next Sunday, August 6th, from at least breakfast, right? Or if you want to make it longer, fast for the whole day. We will be participating in communion on that Sunday. And wouldn't it be a cool act of reverence and awe if the representative body and blood of Jesus was the only thing we received next Sunday? The only thing that sustains us. We say, God, you are all I need. And that even means, hear this coffee drinkers, that even means we're not going to be serving coffee next Sunday. But we believe that God is calling us to fast, and we should obey. And as we fast next Sunday, would you pray for our church? Would you pray for the future of our church and for our leadership? The leadership team has been praying and fasting for several months now, every Friday, for the transition that we're in. And, and this is an invitation for us as a whole body. Would we join the leadership team in this prayer over the transition? I'm going to invite Amber up, and she's going to play a little music as we um, have opportunity to express before the Lord this commitment that we're going to do. So if you're going to participate in this fast next Sunday, um, and if you're going to fast in an additional way, um, would you grab a sticky note? There's a sticky note in the pocket of the chair in front of you. So grab those. There's several of them. Pull them out. Pass them around. There should be pens around you. So grab the, a sticky note that's in the chair and in front of you. There's also extra sticky notes up here at the altar. And would you write on it, the, these things. If you want to, you can share your name. Um, you don't have to, but if you'd like to share your name, you can write your name on there. Um, but if you're going to participate in the church fast next Sunday in some way, whether you're just going to fast from breakfast or you're going to fast for the whole day, would you just write church fast on there? And then you heard we have a, a prayer walk on August 12th um, in the community. We're going to meet at the McCormick Park Band Shell for that. We're not meeting here at the church. We're meeting right downtown McCormick Park Band Shell. And another invitation, would you fast on the 12th from, from breakfast and lunch? And then we're going to culminate that fast together at our community tailgate. Um, so um, as, as we go around downtown, um, would we just be fasting and in prayer for our community and for our schools? And then if you're going to participate in an individual fast, maybe God is calling you, put something on your heart right now to fast from. Would you just write that thing down and commit that to the Lord? What you're fasting from, and then under that, just write your prayer focus. Why are you fasting? Are you fasting for repentance? Are you fasting to seek forgiveness or to forgive someone? Are you fasting and you're going to set aside that time and spend it with your children? Or are you fasting for, for that time and you're going to spend it in God's word and in prayer? So as you write those things down and as Amber plays, we just bring those, those notes here to the altar and, and stick them right to the, the top of the altar. And if you want to kneel and pray, you're welcome to. And then the staff is going to come after service and collect these notes. And we're just going to split them up between the staff. And we're all going to be in prayer as we pray and fast over the things that you guys are praying and fasting for and from. So 
the invitation is here for you. Come and, and lay your notes and lay your offering before the Lord this morning. Um, and then I'll close us in prayer after everyone's done. to continue to come and lay them forward and um, even after I close. But let me just pray for us and pray over these things that we've committed to fasting for and for us as a church as we fast that, the God, that our God would honor that. Lord Jesus, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for um, your grace which extends to us. Lord, for the fact that you came into this world in the human form that you might pay for our sins that we might have a relationship with you and so Jesus we just lay these things before you Lord we're, we're setting aside things in our lives that we turn to for comfort we're setting aside things in our lives that distract us from you and from those around us to focus on you. So Lord Jesus, as we just fast as a church body for the transition that we're in, for our community and our schools, and for those around us, Lord, would you be present? Would you show up in a mighty and powerful way? that we would see that there is power in fasting and that power comes from you and our relationship with you and your power living in and through us, through your Holy Spirit. So Lord Jesus, we love you and we pray that you would go with us in this day and that you would reveal yourself to us as we fast, that it would just spur us on towards even greater works for you and a deeper relationship with you. Let me pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Don't forget that there is that connection lunch after service. If 
you've just recently started attending our church, you're welcome to come to that, and you're welcome to continue to lay um, your offering before the Lord as in the form of this fast. Thank you. Uh, they should start music back there. 